welcome to Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church in Berkeley. We are doing our best to get through this time together and being there for each other. A particular welcome to any visitors that join us today here on Zoom or on the YouTube. If you would like to contact, to get more information about this church, you can contact me at pastor at sothb.org. This is the fifth Sunday of Pentecost. The season of Pentecost is what we are in the church year when we celebrate God with us as spirit, flowing, loving, outpouring love and guiding us. Today we're going to begin with two songs for hymn sing that have been chosen by members of the congregation. The first hymn is chosen by Carol, softly and tenderly. The second song is chosen by Sylvia, Spirit of Gentleness. And I, Pastor Sharon Stockley, chose the closing hymn, This is My Song, in honor of our country's uh, Independence Day.
Welcome to Longtime Lutherans, Christians from every tradition and people new to the faith. Welcome to all who have no church home, want to follow Christ, have doubts, or do not believe. Welcome to new visitors and old friends. Welcome to people of every age and size, color and culture, gender identity, sexual orientation, and marital status, ability and challenge. Welcome to believers, questioners, and questioning believers. This is a place where you are welcome to celebrate and sorrow, rejoice and recover. This is a place where lives are made new. Welcome on this day. Please join me for the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves, rely on our own efforts. We exploit your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We miss the mark. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy poured into us, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. You are great, O oh God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now we have the word for all ages, and I have a question this morning. What does God look like? You know, there's, I'm going to tell you several stories. And the, the first one is, uh, there were three people and they were, could not see. And they were by an elephant. And they were trying to describe the elephant. But one was at the trunk of the elephant and said, well, the elephant's kind of like this hose. And it's, you know, kind of got a curve in it. And another person is by the foot and says, you know, this is big and wide and it's heavy. I can't move it. And another person's back by the tail. That's what an elephant looked like to them, whoever was at a certain spot. And that's fine because all together, people can piece together what God looks like. The other story is about a young person, I would say four or five, and they were in Sunday school and the Sunday school teacher had them drawing pictures. And the, the teacher came over to Tracy and said, Tracy, what are you drawing? And Tracy said, well, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the Sunday school teacher said, well, nobody knows what God looks like. And Tracy said, they will in a minute. So anyway, I'm going to invite you to consider how you might draw pictures of God. And just to invite you to imagine with all the creativeness and here's some some ideas that maybe God might look like this or God might look like this and whatever the picture has the meaning for you here here's my last one to show you God might look like this God does invite us to, with imaginations to, to try to understand who God is, knowing that we can't fully uh, by ourselves understand who God is. We do need help. We get through the Holy Scriptures and we get it through each other. 
and in other ways in the world of the spirit moving among us. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for your creativeness and your guidance in showing us who you are, that we can look around every day and look to see you, not only in thoughts and Bibles, but in each other. Bless us and keep us that we might show you to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. The first reading is from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 to 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to all the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the bond blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare, that I will restore to you double. Holy wisdom, holy words. The second reading is from Psalm chapter 145, verses 8 to 14. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. Holy wisdom, holy words. Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said he has a demon. And the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. 
All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take your yoke upon you and learn from me. Take my, lo take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved people of God, grace and peace to you from God our Creator, Christ our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, and our Guide, the one who outpours God's love to us in this time. Several years ago, I was talking to a friend of mine, and she told me this story. She said she was uh, driving in her car, and her young daughter was in the back seat. Her daughter was about the age when she could put sentences together. And all of a sudden, her daughter yelled out, Mom, I'm forgetting what God looks like. You know, I wonder if our country and the world has forgotten what God looks like. There is so much to distract us. You know, if you just think about commercial and ads that come towards us people of all ages trying to get us to buy things or engage in things. You think of the intentional marketing towards children or even scams directed at elderly for the purpose of making profit, not for making a living, but for making a profit beyond what one needs without the regard for common good. What is going on in our country? Why do we do what we do? We are now in this particular time with looming numbers of people with COVID-19. People confused, it seems like, about what would protect one another. One wonders if our country has lost its way. We hear confused voices about what Black Lives Matter means at the same time. What does God look like in all of this? You know, our whole story of Jesus is about Jesus coming to the world to reveal what God looks like, who God is, to remind us what God is about, that God is for us, to help us, like a good shepherd, not to judge us, but to save us. You know, our gospel text today is a story of people who are confused. They have lost perspective on what is most important. It says the children cry out. In essence, they're crying out to the people of the generation, you are missing the important things. We played the flute for you in a time where we could celebrate that you did not dance. And when losses came, we wailed at the misery and loss, but you did not mourn. You know, things that a child finds as simple as loving and caring, receiving and giving, becomes complicated and confusing. The people then are also not clear because they complain about John the Baptist because John the Baptist fasted, and they complain about Jesus because he celebrated life. And Jesus said, what is this about? Earlier in Matthew, we hear in the ninth chapter that Jesus went about into the cities and villages, proclaiming the good news and healing people. But when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. In Matthew 6, it says, no one can serve two masters. They will either hate one and love the other, be devoted to one and despise the other. And then he says, you cannot serve God and money. At the end of our gospel text, it says this, come to me all who are heavily burdened 
I will give you rest. He says, I will give you clarity. Now, scholars have looked at this word burden to try to understand a little more specifically about what this could mean. And in Matthew, there's two times that the words burden is used in this text today. And also when Matthew 23, and it says these things. The scribes and the Pharisees tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of all others. The burdens he is talking about are those extra religious rules that the scribes and Pharisees have come, out, come together. Now we know about the Torah, which gives the law, and the law is essentially love God and love your neighbor as yourself, and the Ten Commandments, and also to welcome the widow, the orphan, and the foreigner and to welcome them into your lives that they might have their daily bread. But the scribes and Pharisees have searched the scriptures and they came up with 613 extra commandments, 248 positive ones, and 365 negative ones. A negative one for each day of the year. Thou shalt not. I wonder what today's thou shalt not is. I didn't look to see. No wonder people are confused, the heavy burden of so many law. That Matthew makes it clear that Jesus comes to fulfill the law, and the law is this. Love God, trust God, have faith in God, remember God, and love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew makes it clear, Jesus is our clarity. You know, if you want to know who God is, how God loves, how gives a God self, how God comes to save and not condemn, look at Jesus. Jesus is pretty clear in all this. Jesus reaches out for everybody and looks out for everybody. I wonder where you get your clarity about God, about God's intent. What helps you get clear about how we can live our lives together and not get confused and follow unloving ways that pull at us. I was uh, quite moved this week. Um, sometimes the spirit acts in lives and something, you learn something new. And today I was listening to a Taze hymn with a group of people on Thursday and some of the people are from Ireland. Actually, it's an, it was an Irish service. They were at it was like eight o'clock at night in Ireland and noon here. And they played this Teze hymn and it's called Lave Mus Deum. It was in Latin. The English phrase that kind of gets repeated is let us praise God who created and redeemed us and will save us by God's mercy alone. It was really interesting for me to look at all the Latin words and I focused on two of them. Misericordia salvata, and sola, only. Salvation, salvata is salvation, sola is only. But this word misericordia was really curious for me because I could see the cordia, the heart in it. And I knew it was translated as mercy, but I wanted to get a little bit more about what this word was about. So I searched and I found what I thought was a good definition. Mercy. Misericordia, if you look at the first part of the word, misery and cordia, heart, misery, heart. God's heart entering into our misery. This is the gospel of our Lord, that God's heart enters into our misery. This is who Jesus is. Jesus is God's heart who enters into our misery, who enters into the fullness of human life as it is. Don't we need these words now? Don't we need to turn to God and trust that God is coming into the difficult places and the hard issues to bring peace? That word of peace we heard when Natalia read the words of Zechariah in this first reading. If we could but just tr trust Jesus Christ, 
we could live in his clarity and his way. Our trusting is this. The faith that we have in Jesus Christ is what justifies us. That Jesus is God's heart with us. The faith that Martin Luther came to believe. Martin Luther said that faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace. So sure and certain that a man or a human being could stake one's life on it a thousand times. This Martin Luther was clear that we may not be certain about things, but we can be certain in God's love for us. No matter what your burdens are, and even if you want to discount or deny your burdens, thinking they are not as difficult as others, no matter if you are in your darkest moments, if you are mourning a great loss, if you are experiencing a great change, and if you are confused and nothing seems to make sense anymore, if the problems of this generation seem so insurmountable, let us remember what God looks like, that God is with us in all this, and that Jesus has shown us that. Let us trust. Come, all you who are heavenly burdened, be yoked with Jesus, with Jesus by our side, as Christ bring God into our lives. Jesus says, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Let us join together for the affirmation of faith. We believe in a creative God. Who breathed life into dust, turned seeds into flowers, and flooded the sky with stars. We believe in an incarnate God. Who went hungry in the desert, walked barefoot on the water, and taught from the mountainside. We believe in a wilderness God, the Holy Spirit whose love could be described as nothing short of wild, breaking through the barriers that keep us from loving. But with confidence and hope, we long to follow our wilderness God who walks with people on their darkest nights. Who sings hope into places of grief, isolation, and suffering, and who exists in the form of untamed joy, passionate love, and impossible hope. Amen. Let us pray. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. 
lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the nations, especially the United States and Canada, celebrating their nationhood. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from a patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick, or oppressed. Especially we pray for Gina, Carol, Eve Marie, mother of Johannes, Dorla, mother of Francisca, Stanley, Kathleen, Meg, Frank, Florence, Esther, Gifford, Robert, Frida, Stanley, Kathleen, Michaela's brother-in-law, for Roberto who is hospitalized and strength for his wife, Josie, for all who mourn loss of loved ones. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this congregation. Bless all pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our buildings. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways your love transforms our lives. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. I invite you to unmute and I ask for whom or what else do the people of God pray? We pray for Rosie, Nick's mother, during her recovery. And we pray for Jeanette, for her family, for her uh, sister whose husband died recently, for the children and for the whole family. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died in faith, Philip, Steve, and Nancy. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to get ready to share the piece, and if anyone wants to kind of shake around and move their bodies around a little bit as we get ready, I invite you to unmute and say greetings, or you feel free to chat to one another or chat to everybody. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Also with you. Share that peace, and particularly for our young ones, too. Peace, everyone. Okay, at this point, um, you're welcome to un uh, keep unmuted or to unmute yourself. And it's time for the thank offering. Uh, the thank offering was suggested by uh, young Sam, and it is R, it's going to RIP medical debt. 
they bundle medical debt and that they state that for every $100 that is given, they can reduce medical debt by $10,000. So that's pretty amazing. So does anybody want to share any thanks? Thank you, Natalia, for being our lector today. And I really appreciate it and like the way you did it. Uh, I'll offer a blessing. Um, I am really grateful for Hamilton and being able to watch it. So that's been a um, wonderful thing in our household. Okay, if uh, folks will mute again and we will um, do our offering prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, with you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our hearts to live it. We pray this through Christ our Redeemer. Amen. We're going to prepare for the great thanksgiving where we give thanks for God coming into our lives that God has made known by Jesus. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We prepare for the Lord's prayer. And uh, please invite to, to read it in the language of your preference. Our Father, Mother, Vater, and uns im Himmel, Hallowed heiligt werde dein Name, dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, im Himmel so auf Erden. Unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute, gib uns unsere Schuld, wie auch wir vergeben unseren Schuldigen. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlöse uns von dem Bösen. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. Please receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
Go in peace. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks be to God.